11 Together, WTVD. At home with Peggy Mann. Entertainment and information brought to you each day by your hostess, Peggy Mann. Well, Cliff's here with a book that's full of enchantment. In fact, it's called The Last Enchantment. It's Mary Stewart, or Lady Mary Stewart's book, and it's all about the court of King Arthur. I'll let him tell you the rest of it. You know, thousands and thousands of women across America now own their businesses, and there are certainly quite a few here in North Carolina, like the very attractive lady whose firm is called Thimble Thoughts. You'll meet Jean Breckenridge today. And in another completely different area, Mary Diener, who heads her firm, which is a consultant firm, consultant to management and all sorts of things. We'll meet these ladies a little bit later in the program, but right now, let's find out what Cliff's going to say right after this. Why wear the same pair of glasses every day? You don't wear the same dress or the same shoes. At Eckerd Optical Centers, we make it easy to own more than one pair. We give you 25% off the second pair made from the same prescription. So try on those glasses you always wanted to see yourself in. Exciting glasses, fashion glasses, sunglasses. At Eckerd's, the first pair is at a good price to start with. Then we give you 25% off the second pair. Eckerd Optical Centers. Now smooth, refreshing Mountain Dew comes in the new 2-liter plastic bottle. This bottle is tough, no matter who gets their paws on it. And this tough new 2-liter plastic bottle of great-tasting Mountain Dew is 25% lighter than glass. It's tough and light. You know dragging the washout to a coin-operated laundry can be a hassle. What you might not know is that you wouldn't have to do it if you owned a Hoover Portable washer and dryer. The Hoover Portable works anywhere. It doesn't need any special plumbing or wiring. It'll wash, rinse, and spin four loads of clothes in 30 minutes and get them really clean. It's because of something Hoover calls turbo action. It's something you'll call terrific. Get the Hoover Spin Drying Washer and Matching Portable Dryer. $20 discount this week only at Dailies Incorporated. Well, Cliff, the last enchantment, that sounds like a fairy story. Yes, it is. Um, and incidentally, it is the third book in the trilogy that uh, Lady Stewart wrote on the Arthurian legend. The first book, okay. which is, uh, the first two are available in paperback, and the first one is called The Crystal Cave. The second one is called The Hollow Hills. And then this, which ends up the trilogy, is called The Last Enchantment. And they need not be read in order, but for those of your viewers who like to be neat and orderly in their uh -huh. reading, that is the order in which uh, they were written and they make um, uh, logical progression if taken in that order. Are they all about King Arthur? They're all about that period in uh -huh. uh, England which preceded by several centuries the Norman Conquest. And when England was, be was just becoming civilized when England was just becoming one united kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, it had previously been, uh, there was a kingdom called East Anglia. There was another kingdom called Saxony. And mm -hmm. there were the Celts above the, um, the River Clyde. And there were the Celts in Ireland. And uh, it was a very tumultuous time in English history. And of course, it has a great deal to do with uh, the English-speaking peoples who finally colonized the United States because we were a combination of Angles and Saxons exactly. and Normans. And this is actually the reason for the, the rather heavy preponderance of red-haired people in the southeastern part of the United States because... I didn't realize we had more redheads than other do. people. We do. We um, do. Um, you'll find that there are more redheads in the uh, Carolinas uh, Georgia and Virginia than probably any other part of the country for because this is where uh, people of Scottish and Irish and uh, English origin uh, settled most heavily. Uh -huh. Is uh, all of this historical or is it fiction? 
<clears throat> let us say that, it, it, first of all, that it's very difficult to pin down uh, events in this era, which it includes the 5th, 6th, and 7th, 8th mm -hmm. centuries, because a great deal of what happened uh, in that period of England's history was not written down. It was carried uh, in the troubadour um, um, tradition that of great events in the history at that time were sung about, mm -hmm. were told uh, by, by professional storytellers, and uh, great songs were written. And if you wanted to honor the king and, and, and get his attention, you wrote a wonderful song about how he uh, knocked the stuffing out of the so-and-sos over in the battle of such-and-such. -such. With Excalibur. And you came with your harp <laughs> and you sang to him this song about how brave and courageous he was, and you may become uh, the court musician. So a lot of English history of this period is in the tradition of the storyteller or the song singer. And this concerns the last then of the trilogy, and it concerns the, uh, the, the, the uh, life of King Arthur, who may or may not have actually been. This is uh, what I was going to ask okay. you. We have wondered. There's been such a controversy yeah, as to there, whether he's It's real never been or not. settled. It's never been settled. Uh -huh. He is a very large figure in English legend. But whether or not he was an historical figure has never been settled by the experts. He makes a marvelous figure to, uh, to write stories about. Mm -hmm. And of course his, his, um, his marriage and the, uh, the struggle between uh, himself and the, the uh, child that he fathered by his half-sister uh, Morgos and the fact that this child, whose name was Mordred, Mordred. gave him a, a perfectly dreadful time throughout his entire... The villain uh, all the way through all, all indeed, the stories. Yes. And the, the teller of the tale is Merlin. Oh. And <clears throat> to me, one of the most interesting aspects of the story is Merlin's explanation of how Britain became, uh, went slowly from a pagan nation to a Christian nation. And that, that is occurring during the pages of this book. That they are... There are still many shrines far up in the hills to the god of lightning and the god of uh, good planting and the god of fine harvest and so forth. And probably Stonehenge. Yes. Even. And, uh, and, and then Merlin acknowledges the fact that God with the capital G is sort of moving in and taking over and he's perfectly happy because this seems to be a, a, um, an easier god to deal with than all of these little small deities that, that had deities. shrines up and down the moors. Had any of the large uh, cathedrals been built? By that they, were, be, they were beginning. Of course, Canterbury, uh, I, uh, I, I, we have a number of English viewers, and I am bound to be corrected, but I do believe that Canterbury may well be on the site of uh, uh, a pre-Christian shrine, and Canterbury may well be the oldest of the English cathedrals, mm. and it is why Canterbury and York are, are racing neck and neck for the two oldest cathedrals, and that's why the, the, the bishop uh, in the cathedral at Canterbury is known as an archbishop, and likewise, the bishop of York is known as an archbishop, and they are the only two in all of England. Sounds like a fascinating book. Has it got all about Guinevere and Lancelot's it love is, affair and so forth? It's, it is so beautifully written. It is, it is a book which immensely pleases me because no one... Uh, handles the English language as well as an English writer, and this Lady Stewart is an, an English writer par excellence. Indeed she is. You tell me that Gertrude, that cute little <laughs> weenie that you've got at home, your little dachshund, tore the eighth cover off of another book you were going to Yes, what yes, I have been reading for <laughs> several weeks and enjoying The Last Convertible, and uh, I'd like to say that Gertrude also enjoyed The Last Convertible. She, she ate the cover on it the night before last, and that's why I haven't brought it on uh, here in the studio, <laughs> but uh, she thought it was delicious, and I thought it was readable, it and is? I highly recommend it for what summer entertaining. What is it all about? It is. It's going to be a total bore to anybody over, anybody under 35. Oh. If you're under 35, forget it. So it, it has to do with convertible to cars. It has to do with the period of World War II, and and the big bands, and how college people moved from the era of the carefree 40s into the era mm -hmm. of war, and it, it, it's a most absorbing tale. Sounds wonderful. Cliff, thank you so much. Look for you next week. Okay. Right now this, and then let's go outdoors and grill some chicken. It's a lot cooler than eating in the house these hot nights. 
This week, ask your A&P butcher for bone-in chuck roast, just 99 cents a pound, and visit the A&P farm where you'll find sweet, juicy western cantaloupes, just 59 cents each at A&P. I like a day that's not cloudy and a tea that's not cloudy. That's why I like Louisiana. Louisiana's got special tea leaves that keep it clear as a bell all day. Now, if you're drinking Lipton or Tetley, look at the box. It tells you what to do when it turns cloudy. Louisiana says nothing about cloudy. Because it doesn't get cloudy. <sighs> Louisiana, the one tea that's always clear as a bell. Whether you set up your grill by a cool mountain stream, at your favorite campsite, or right in your own backyard, the National Broiler Council says, take chicken along. There's a wide variety of chicken cuts available, and every one of them is just great for grilling. You know, outdoor activity really whets the appetite, so allow plenty of cooking time. A slow, even fire will make your chicken just so moist and delicious. If you line your grill with foil before cooking, cleanup is a breeze. And you can use foil like a tent over the chicken if your grill doesn't have a hood. Wait until the charcoal briquettes are all a light ash gray before putting the chicken on the grill. Then spread the charcoal evenly over an area slightly larger than that covered by the chicken so it will cook on all sides. If you place the bone or rib cage side down next to the heat when you start to cook, the bones act as an insulator and prevent chicken from cooking too fast. You've probably used chicken halves and quarters for barbecuing, but have you ever tried grilling just drumsticks and thighs? They're perfect for hibachi cooking and require so little advanced preparation. Almost everyone has a favorite recipe for barbecuing chicken, but it's always fun to try something different. Sauces made with a tomato base or a vinegar base are ideal for whole chicken or parts. Or try marinating chunks of tasty chicken breasts and cooking them on skewers. Turn the chicken frequently when cooking, and if the sauce has an oil base, baste during the entire cooking process. If you're using a tomato base sauce, wait until the chicken is almost done before basting so it won't be overly browned. Remember, the smaller the pieces, the less cooking time required. Everybody loves chicken, so you'd better allow a half a broiler fryer per person. Don't worry about making too much. If there's any left over, just freeze it and bring it out on a rainy day when reheating will bring back memories and the aromas of outdoor cooking. You know, when you grill chicken, you have the added satisfaction of knowing that you're serving a delicious, protein-rich food at a very economical price. And no matter where you cook it, chicken tastes good. This is Webster's Encyclopedia of Dictionaries. Twelve dictionaries in one exquisitely bound volume that can answer nearly all of your family's needs for facts and data. It's great for homework, crossword puzzles, creative writing, job reports, and even help with medical and legal terminology. Here's what it includes. A complete Webster's Dictionary. A dictionary of scientific terms, including the terms used in astronomy, chemistry, physics, etc. A crossword puzzle dictionary with answers to over 20,000 crossword puzzle sticklers. A full color world atlas and geographical dictionary with the names, locations, and pertinent information for 5,000 places throughout the U.S. and the world. A dictionary of familiar quotations with over 2,000 quotes and sayings from your favorite authors and personalities throughout history. A rhyming dictionary that's a must for any creative writing, like poems, essays. A Bible dictionary of names, places, and events. A dictionary of synonyms, antonyms, and homonyms that helps you find just the right word quickly and easily. 
You also get a music dictionary, a medical dictionary, a legal dictionary, and a complete 70-page outline of U.S. history. If you were to buy all of these books separately, you'd expect to pay over $100. The publishers suggested price is $24.50. But now, through this television offer, you can get this deluxe bound volume for only $12.95. But don't take my word for it. Examine it for 14 days. And if you're not completely satisfied, return it for a full refund. Here's how to order. Call toll-free 1-800-228-3800. That's 1-800-228-3800. When your package arrives, pay just $12.95 plus COD postage. That's 1-800-228-3800. 1-800-228-3800. Operators are standing by. This is a free call. That's 1-800-228-3800. Call now. I want to give you a very special invitation to join our special tonight at 8.30, Today's Woman, Where Does She Work? And we're going to continue that here on the program live today because there are business women owners all over this country. For instance, Transmissions by Lucille is a wonderful car transmission firm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. A tracer of missing persons is Janita Cargile of Los Angeles. And a restaurant chain owner is Mary Green of Houston. And I'd like for you to meet two people here in the Research Triangle who also own their own businesses. Next to me is Mary Diener, and Mary, you are Diener Associates Incorporated, a consulting firm. Right. And next to her is Jean Breckenridge, and Jean, uh, it, Thimble Thoughts is interesting. What is it? You tell us what Thimble Thoughts is. Well, thimble Thoughts means small thoughts. It has nothing to do with sewing. Uh -huh. Uh, but Thimble Thoughts are uh, painted poetry that are sold to be lasting reminders for people to hang on their wall. We have some pictures of these, and let's take a look at them right now. Here they are as they come up on the screen. And this, they, they are all together wall hanging, you see. Yes, they are sold framed or ready to frame. We have about 50 designs. And uh, they are sold in about 22 stores here in the area. Also sold uh, as far north as Pennsylvania. And Wonderful. sold quite a bit out in Houston, where you said some lady has a restaurant chain. A restaurant chain. Tell us a little bit about you, Jean. Now, you, are, you really are a poetess. You do the, the poetry on these. Yes, I do. In fact, uh, Thimble Thoughts begin with the short thought. Uh -huh. They are common sense, philosophical sayings. Uh, that uh, take some time to get into this concise form. Uh, there are thoughts that sometimes we need to be reminded of, and exactly. I've heard that a number of people who have bought Thimble Thoughts have hung them in their kitchens to remind members of the family <laughs> about certain things that they've been trying to get a point across about. And even if the children can't read, they know those pictures. That's and right. And what goes yes. with it. it really That's right. Mary, tell us a little bit about Dina Associates, how it got started, and exactly what it is. All right. It got started in uh, Sarasota, Florida, approximately eight years ago. In 1972, we turned it into a corporation. Early 74, we moved up to the Research Triangle Park after doing some market research on the area and deciding that this had a tremendous potential for growth, Wonderful. and it's where we wanted to be. Tell us a little bit about the services that you offer from your firm. All right. Peggy, we're a very unique firm, actually. I don't think there's another one in the area or even in the southeast. Mm -hmm. uh, under the broad category of communications and consultants, we cover three complete segments of business services. One is the management, business management consulting. The second is educational research planning and development. And the third is promotional services. Under that umbrella comes a full service advertising agency, the public relations. Now you're located in the Triangle. In you the Research have, Triangle Park, yeah. Does your business have staff? You have several oh, yes. people working with you. We have nine you. employees. Nine employees. Yes. You sound very successful, Jean. You have employees, too. Yes, I have about five artists that do the artwork that combines with the poetry. Now, 
two, it, the nice thing is that these are two such opposite pole businesses. One is very artistic, one is very business-like. But Jean, how is it? You know, sometimes we hear that artists starve to death. Is it, Can it be made a very successful business for a woman, particularly? Well, um, Thimble Thoughts uh, that I began as a business, not ever as a hobby. Some I people see. think this grew out of a hobby. It did not. I decided I had been writing poetry for years, but uh, when I began it, I began it as a business. Um, and I decided to use freelance artists who, as you say, frequently are starving, and certainly poets exactly. starve too. I must have just hit the right time. All I can say is that they're selling, seem to fulfill a need because they are selling either a need or a uh, uh, some enjoyment, some That's entertainment. Wonderful. Would they be found in some of the uh, variety, so the specialty shops, the gift shops, and things yes. in this area? Yes, we we sell to gift boutiques. I see. Um, we have them in some housewares department store of uh, department stores. Uh, they're the matted to be framed are sold in art galleries, mm -hmm. and um, we also have them in some uh, hotel gift shops oh, that's from Marriott Hotels and Sheraton Hotels. Mary, you are the president of the North Carolina Triangle Chapter of the uh, American Association of Women Business Owners. That's correct. All right. Why did, did you need an association? It's a national association now. It goes all yes, over. Yes, it is. Uh, what does it offer? What does an organization like this offer as a support to women who are in business who want to go into business? Well, I think it can be boiled down into a very short phrase. It's creating the network, really, between women that men have had since time began. This is sort of a, it's an idea that women were not really familiar with. They were not, by tradition, trained to think along these lines. But uh, the network is something that helps each person up the ladder. The referral service that uh, between members that, referring I can speak other. to that because um, uh, since we've had the Research Triangle chapter of the National Association of Women Business Owners, uh, I've been able to uh, tap some resources I need. A few people have even tapped some of the, if I may call it, that expertise that we've learned sure. in our business. And this and you share with, freely. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And this, this goes for not only the Triangle area, but nationally as well because one of the uh, objectives of this organization at the moment is to compile a national listing of all women-owned businesses in the United States. You call it the New Woman's Network. New Woman's Network. Why did you give it that name, Mary? Well, I personally did not, but I think uh, it may be an offshoot of what used to be called the Old Boys Network. Ah, and this was the people that got together at the yeah. civic clubs and for lunch and, and the rotaries and, and where made their most bank of, loans and mm -hmm, so forth. Where right most of the business lines. was done and women are just now beginning to realize that this is a part of doing business. That is wonderful. Uh, tell us who some of the triangle successful business women are. Well, I think everybody would love to know who oh, are of course, here. Jean and I are both the most You are both the most examples. That's what are some of the other interesting mm -hmm. businesses in All right, to give you some of the, the businesses themselves, we, we cover, let's see, we have two real estate people in Durham, Kelly Matherly, B.J. Hudson, uh -huh. Jane Shankle in Raleigh, a very successful CPA firm, Joanne Roebuck, Betty Brewer in Raleigh, uh, insurance agents, to Lena Shaw out of Chapel Hill, <clears throat> a bridal consultant. Lynn Garris, a motion picture producer. Very interesting. Mary Moore Ritchie, court reporting. We have antiques, glass blowing, retailers, attorneys, and management and marketing consultants, land if developers. If you own your own business or a service, then you are eligible for membership. Right. The only, and there are different ways you are eligible, too. This might be interesting to your viewers, Peggy. Uh, if you own your own business completely, or if you own a 50% share of it in a partnership, mm -hmm. or if you have 5% of the corporate stock, if it is a corporation, and are active in the management of the firm. Uh -huh. This allows you to be eligible for active membership. We also have associate and provisional. So you have some small business owners, some Very larger small. business business um, owners. This is one of the purposes of the organization. We find that the people who need this organization the most are the people who are just going into business, who are thinking about going into mm -hmm. business. 
to help them avoid the pitfalls that many of us have already been through. What are some of the things, for instance, in yours, a creative business, Gene, that you could offer somebody? Well, we've learned a great deal about, for instance, framing and matting. It's, oh, it's like everything have. else. The um, more you know about something, the more you see there is to know. And um, um, this is an area that we have spent quite a good deal of time trying to uh, uh, find what we think is both aesthetically attractive and also uh, can be um, that we can handle at the least cost. Do you have kind of a think tank with your artists? I mean, now you create the poetry and right. you kind of what should do they submit some ideas to you to illustrate? Yes, when I write a poem, then I um, contact the four or five artists that I say four or five because the first one that I used was a young man who had graduated from Carolina in art, and at the time that I hired him, was working as a construction worker in Chapel Hill. He is now teaching in an art department in a college in Virginia. But uh, he made the fifth. But I have four others that I use, freelance artists, and I submit the poem to the four, giving them my ideas of how it could mm -hmm. be illustrated. Then frequently they come up with an idea much better than mine had been. And then they are each hand watercolored. Mary, how could people get in touch with you, women who are listening to us who might have aspirations to own their own business, already do, and would be already interested do. in your... I think the best thing would be to call uh, my offices at 549-8945 in the Research Triangle Dean Park. Dean Associates right. in, in the yeah. Research Triangle Park. Mm -hmm. Thank you both so much. We want to present some more of these women business owners from the Triangle as the time goes on and would like to hear from people out in our viewing audience who have interesting businesses because I think this is a new facet in our lives. Right after this, we'll be back. Every day is a sales day at Metrolee. Save right now on specials like these. Save on new furniture like this living room or den group. Sofa and chair, just $218. Or all four pieces, only $318. Our volume buying for rental allows our sales outlets to offer values like this new five-piece dinette for just $58. Or these big chests, only $38 and $42. New furniture, another great way to save at Metrolease. Good furniture, good price. We guarantee it. Metrolease sales outlet, Fayetteville, Durham, Raleigh. Kmart is your saving store, where your dollar buys you more. Boys will be boys in our best jeans. Durable Dacron polyester and cotton with western styling and flared bottoms. Permanent press for easy care and reinforced knees through size 12. A variety of colors. In boys sizes 4 to 7, $4. Sizes 8 to 14, $5. Sale end Saturday. Kmart is the saving medical tests. Have you many times had them off, ordered for you and you didn't know what in the world the doctor was ordering? We'll talk about that with Dr. Truman Snobble tomorrow as he talks about the book he wrote, It's Your Body. Know what the doctor ordered. And Joe Peters will be here to show you how to make collars. See you tomorrow. You're invited to be at home with Peggy Mann. Again tomorrow when we'll have more information and items of interest for the entire family. This has been a WTVD studio presentation with portions pre-recorded. If you occasionally overdo it, you may get an overdoer's backache. A nagging ache in the lumbar triangle a muscle spasm of the deltoids, a painful soreness in the teres major. If so, you should know about Doan's pills. Doan's contains a medically proven pain-killing ingredient that relieves the pain of backache and strained muscles for hours. Doan's. It takes the ache out of backache. Doan's. You can't find lighter than sunlight light. Sunlight light. Sunlight light. Fried foods that taste lights.